Hello YouTube community, this is Aiden Cecil giving you a review on the high-grade Universal Century Gundam F91 from the movie Gundam F91. Now this will be my first YouTube video and so I figured, hey, why not uh, do a Gundam model kit review? I'm a fan of Prime 92 and Kakarot 197's works and I thought I'd give it a try myself. So feel free to rate, subscribe, and give any feedback or if you have any questions I will write back to you after you post. Uh, so I figured not a lot of people have you know even mentioned the F91 on YouTube. I got mine from Hobby Link Japan. It came on Christmas Day. You know, lucky me. And uh, I didn't see any actual reviews on the thing. So with that said Here's the model kit. Now, I haven't done any painting, but there, there is some slight panel lining I've done. I don't know if it's going to show up on the camera, but I did the front skirts in red, and the only stickers, because I hate stickers on model kits, the only stickers I used were for the eyes, and I think they're showing up nicely. They're green, uh, and they, they're light reflective. They're really nice. Uh, and then I did the feet, but those messed up. Now, I don't know, and if it doesn't show, I'm going to be really disappointed. Um, for the shoulders, if I do it a little closer, mm, well, this one is. You can see on the shoulder the F with the red ink in the groove. Now, it's molded where you can color in the F91 symbols on his shoulders, and I thought that was really neat. I was going to color them all the way in, but I just did the outline of them because I thought, you know, why not make it a little unique? Now, for size, you got to remember this is the later Universal Century, and the suits were smaller and more energy efficient. But just to give you an idea of the size comparison to other kits, I thought I would do a, another newer kit, the Nemo Unicorn version Desert Color. And tilt this camera a tiny bit, maybe do a little size. Now, well, now you can see the Nemo is a dramatically larger kit, which it would have been, you know, so no complaints there. Now, for articulation on this thing, the head will rotate 300 and 60 degrees and it's pretty secure on there. The only thing about the head is it doesn't go all the way back like some of the other newer high grade kits and that I guess can be a little disappointing if you are wanting to put him on a stand and I don't know have him flying it wouldn't it wouldn't really work that's the most you could do so you'd have to angle him just right. Now the arms now the shoulders the shoulders are on a different peg they peg into the shoulder pad and the shoulder pad pegs into the body which is you know that makes sense that's the first time his arms popped off that makes sense since um, he's a smaller kit you know it would make it more convenient now the arms the arms get really good a really good bend I'll just go ahead and separate it and show you the arms can go all the way to the shoulder if you want them to. And the hands, the hands can rotate 360 degrees. Now for the hands you get two beam saber hands and two trigger finger hands. Now you don't have any open or closed hands so it's going to limit you know some of the poses you may want to do there. But you know they it, it was nice of them to include two trigger finger hands for each arm. It's not two of the same. You know, so that, I'll explain why later. Now, the wing, the wing posability is nice. They can go all the way up that far. And, I'll also explain this later in the video, they can turn about that far that away, and they can do it the other way if the hip wasn't going to be in the way. But, I thought that was really nice. And the backpack has a lot of really good design. You can see little indents in it 
where the thrust would be, and you could, I don't remember if it came with stickers for that or not, but if you wanted to paint it up, it wouldn't be so hard. Now, the body is on a ball joint at the waist, and uh, I, I thought that that was really nice because it, it's really secure, but it's not, you know, it's not so loose that it's going to pop right off, but it's still, you get a good range of movement, and it will go 360 degrees easily, no problem there at all. The side skirts move out that far, and the front skirts, I've got mine separated, because you can separate them in the middle, and they'll still hold up, and the front skirts will come out that far, very nice. The, the back skirt doesn't move, but the only problem that I have with this kit, accessories are great, the looks of it are great, it's amazing. The legs only go out that far. I don't know if it's something wrong with mine, or if I did something wrong, or if it really only goes out that far, but that's, I guess if you angle it right, you can get it farther, but then it's going to be poking out the side instead of the front, and there's no excuse for that, because the front skirt moves far enough that the leg should be able to, but the leg can rotate all the way around. I'm not sure why <laughs> you'd want it to, but you can pull off some good angular motion, and the knees are double jointed, but there's not a lot of point in it being double jointed because the legs don't go out far enough for you to make a crouch. But it's still a really nice feature. I mean, I guess if you wanted to get some kind of flying pose, you know, that would work good. And here's a neat little thing. I don't know, because again, the crappy camera quality, I don't know if you're going to be able to see, but the leg on the back of the calf, these thruster vents open up just like it did in the movie. And they're on separate separate parts on the inner workings of the calf. And they just lightly go right back down. And you may be able to see the cracks. And they just lay completely flat on the leg. And they, they don't pop out easily or anything. Uh, mine are secure. Now, the ankle pieces, ankle pieces here, they move separate from the rest of the leg because they're on a ball joint on the back of the heel. And then the foot, the foot moves around really good. It's sturdy, and neither the ankle piece or the foot are loose. They have not popped off yet. Like the arm, though, you know, knock on wood. I didn't think the arm would pop off at the beginning. All right. So now that you've seen the body, I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the accessories. Starting with my personal favorite, I thought this was really interesting. Now, when you take the wing out, you don't have to do any, you know, you don't have to take anything apart or any odd transformation stuff. You just take and it slides forward, but that's not all. There's a piece a thin plastic piece there that you slide out after I move his hand and he's got his cannon and you can actually open this hand take it apart and hook it to the handle and if you angle it you know that's why it angles like that you know if you angle it and he can hold it I thought that was really neat or if you wanted to use the other trigger finger hand you could do that with it and these wings are actually held on really nicely I haven't had one fall off yet. Now, they do loosen up the more you move it around, so you might want to keep a watch on that. But the plastic is nice and sturdy as long as you're not, you know, too rough with it. You're good. Now, you have probably noticed the two holes right here. Well, I have that because if you want to put the regular shield piece on, well, if I don't put it on backwards, you put the regular shield piece on, you know, it looks like it did in the movie, but you can pop that off, and I thought this was going to be really difficult because some of the no-grade model kits or old high grades had that piece, you know, you, you have to plug the shield piece into the clear beam piece and then into the arm, and it holds it so tight that I've broken them before. This one, though, is really good because the plastic is very flexible. It doesn't break easy, and, you know, 
how many high grade kits can you name that have you know clear shields the only clear beams I know of on high grades for the most part are you know like sabers and stuff but you know you just plug this right into his arm where that shield piece went and it's really nice you know it goes anywhere the arm goes now you cannot turn this separate from that piece like you can the regular shields but it's still pretty nice and it's solid I mean I could shake the thing and it would stay in so and also they've got little you'll notice a little gray piece in here now I took the one out on this side it just slides right out and you can have the fin pieces slide right in really easily they slide in just like the movie and you could have the it'll show up better on this blue here the F91 transformation and he also for the transformation came with and I didn't put the stickers on because I really didn't like this head but he came with a different uh, face piece and you would just take the head off and you would lift the helmet piece off and slide this face piece in and he would have the other one but I liked the regular Gundam one better so now beam sabers since I mentioned them you come with two beam sabers and two clear green beams now mine I cut them off too short and they don't hold in for me very well into the actual hilt of the beam saber but he can hold them both pretty solidly if you make sure the hands are nice and tight but with that said now the beam saber or ta the beam rifle I don't know why I said beam saber the beam rifle is really nice um, it's it doesn't need any stickers I mean there's plenty of room on it I don't know if you can tell but there's room on it for the panel lining if you want to do that but it looks just as good without it the only problem I have with it is they did not make the handpiece movable really I don't know why because I I mean he he could hold it I mean he if you could angle that he could get it with the other hand but the hand pieces are easy to take in and out but they hold in solidly this thing does not wiggle around at all and he holds it solidly I mean you could pull off any pose you want he's not gonna move that arm and it's not too heavy for his arm now here's a piece that I'm sure most of you have been interested in the beam launcher that the F-91 used and I think that he only used it in the final battle with the Rafflesia and the handle just like the Dom high grades moves but it moves about that far I mean you could really hold it up there it does require some panel lining and some painting if you want it to look good because I don't think they include stickers for these back fins right here that go around the thruster pod but it still looks pretty good it puts me in the mind of the uh, I don't know why but it makes me think of the new Gundam's beam rifle which it's about as big as the new Gundam's beam rifle and it because the arms bend so well can capture a lot of motion there but you don't have to um, I think he looks honestly I think he looks better without it that's just me personally but if you wanted to get some of the poses like when he was fighting the Rafflesia at the end that would be pretty nice so all in all a really good kit he's not he's not hard to put together but he is harder than other high grades because of his small size and so you know if you are into taking your time with smaller pieces and that sort of thing go for it if you're not as experienced I, I don't know I mean I I wouldn't suggest it to just anyone but if you're a fan of the Universal Century and the movie Gundam F91 this kit does it decency I was really impressed with it I would definitely say that it is worth the price and I guess that's about it so you know let me know what you think tell me what I need to improve on and feel free to respond uh, I'll be on YouTube y'all have a nice one